Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are at the end of a journey you've committed murder to make. A barren wasteland of India, silent, desolate, where there is a cave and a carved image of the goddess Kali, whose heart is a ruby big as a grenade, and which is guarded by a smiling old man from whom there is no escape. Listen now as Escape brings you Ross Murray's story, The Heart of Kali. time. Exactly how long, I don't know. The years pile up and it's hard to remember. But the beginning is easy. The beginning was a bar on the San Francisco waterfront early in 1946. Anton Korchak, owner of the Sea Nest, had put a new bartender on and I waited a week before I made my pitch. It got a reaction. <laughs> Funny, Whitey? <laughs> Kills me. Well, I'm telling you it's true. Uh, kid. If I believed every story about an idol with a ruby for a heart, you think I'm out of my mind? I'll listen. All I need is a few hundred bucks. Oh, you listen. Every waterfront bum comes in here has got a dream to hock. They sell for a beer. You want a few hundred. Yeah, but it's true, I tell you. (laughs) This ruby's as big as a hand grenade, and it's there for the taking. Now, why didn't you take it when you had the chance, Danny? (sighs) I had to get out of the cave when I heard my patrol start shooting. What good was a ruby in my pocket and a Jap bullet in my back? Look, nobody told you to come back to the States when you got mustered out either, did they? Couldn't help it, Whitey. I got malaria. They shipped me out of India before the war ended. Well, it was two years ago. How do you know the ruby's still there? I know it is. It's in a temple. All I have to do... (laughs) What's the matter? Uh, What do you suppose all them swamis around the temple are going to be doing while you grab the ruby? Clap hands? Yeah, but the only one near the idol's an old man. He's just sitting there looking at it. Whitey, it's a cinch, honest. Come on, invest 500, get back maybe, maybe 100,000. Beat it, kid, I got work to do. Whitey. Me and the sawed-off ball bat, Danny. I'll beat it. Mr. Hmm? Oh, sure, mate. Here you are. Thanks. You and A.B.? Me? No. No, why? Hey, you're standing in front of the old tub here, and I figured you were maybe looking to be signed on. No, I wasn't. She's heading out in a half hour. Stick around. Maybe somebody won't show. Yeah? Where's she headed for? Other side of the world. India. India, huh? Yeah. Uh, Calcutta? No, Chanpur. Where's that? hundred miles east. Oh. Um, you, you sure they're signed up full? Yeah. You want to go? Yeah, I want to go. We'll take a passenger. Mm-hmm. How much? hundred and a half. With grub? Captain's table for 175. Folks will grab for 100 and a half. Okay. When are you leaving? Since the first and the engineer come aboard. Uh, when's that? <laughs> when they can't afford any more uh, beer. Okay. How much is that in time? I told you. You told a stranger, mister. Now maybe you're telling a passenger. Half an hour the most. Captain, don't like to wait. They won't have to. I'll be back. I 
started back for the sea nest. Somebody had to listen to me. The ruby, the heart of Kali, it beat inside me like it was my own. I knew I'd do anything to get my hands on it. I'd found the way to get to India. And now all I needed was the money to buy it. It was only a few minutes before closing when I got there. Whitey was mopping up the bar, and the place was empty. Hey, Whitey. Bar's closed, kid. I don't want a drink. Come here. Come here. I got something to tell you. What's on your mind? Uh, Whitey, I can get passage to India. All I need's a hundred and a half. Beat it. Well, where's Mr. Korchak? Back room, checking receipts. Why? Uh-uh, no. You can't go back there, Danny. Well, get your hands off. If you try to stop me, Whitey, I'll kill you. <laughs> go on in, kid. Come in. Uh, can I see you for a minute, Mr. Korchak? What do you want, Danny? Look, Mr. Korchak, I'll make it fast. You know about me being in Burma, that ruby I saw My there. My bartender told Well, me. it's the truth. Whitey knows that I saw it. And he... Leave it now, Mr. K. Everything's locked up for the night. Okay. Good night, Whitey. Night, Danny. <laughs> what do you want for me, Danny? Listen, Mr. Korchak, all I need is 150 bucks. I can get passage to India for that. It's only a hundred and a half. Now, please, Mr. Korchak, I... Eh, don't ask for money, Danny. A beer, maybe, but cash, no. Mr. Korchak... Get lost, kid. But the boat leaves. I you... said get lost, kid. Okay. Okay, let me tell you something. Danny... Listen I'm... to me! I can make you rich for a lousy hundred and a half. I get can out. Make... Get out of my place. You come in here again, I throw you to the seagull. A hundred and a half, Korchak. You're gonna give it to me... Yeah, I guess I got to make you believe me. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that, Korchak. Huh? Now I got to twist this round in you. Uh, you you try it, Danny, and you're going to. <laughs> you should have given me that doll. It's a lot cheaper than dying. Just in time, we're shoving off. I told you I'd be back, didn't I? That's what a lot of them say. Okay, let's go. Yeah, hold on, matey. What's the matter? Let's see the color of your money. Money, yeah. Here. Got a live one, huh? Must be close to... How much in that bundle? Look. Price just went up to two and a half with folks who grub. Hey, what are you trying to do to me? That's the price. Take it or no. Well, let me see the captain. You're uh, looking at him, boy. I'm the captain. Two fifty. Okay. Two fifty. Let's go. Climb aboard. Next stop, Chanpur. Uh, you, Mr. Macon? Yes? Uh, Captain of the Paxton told me to come and see you. Said you could find me a small boat and a guide. I can. When do you wish these things? As soon as possible. Where do you wish to go? You know where Tinsukia is? Mekan knows India well. Oh, well, what's the best way to go? Your boat will take you north up the Brahmaputra River, 
Then you will go overland west to Tinsukia. Yeah, how, how long will that take? I should say two weeks. Okay, let's get going. All charges are in advance. How much? Five hundred dollars American. Uh, I don't. I don't have that much. How much have you? Three hundred dollars. Please, do not lie to me. Three hundred. Captain Evans of the Paxton has already notified me that you have at least four hundred. I don't. Then how much? Three fifty. Take it or I shop around. Be back here tomorrow morning, and I will take you to your boat. And what about my guide? He will be there. You better be. Good day. I was there the next morning. We went to the boat I'd rented. It wasn't much, but I took it. Subhas, my guide, got her wound up, and we started up river for Tinsukia. Up till the time we left, Macon tried to find out why I wanted to go there. I told him nothing. On the fifth day out of Shanpur, Subhas, who hadn't said a dozen words to me in all that time, came back to the stern of the boat and sat down beside me. Saib. Yeah? Why are you making this trip? Macon asked you to find out? No, no, Saib. I ask for myself. Why? Because I do not wish evil to happen to you. Oh, thanks. But it will happen to you. How do you know? Makan wishes it so. Why? He says you know of much gold buried near Tinsukia. He's crazy. Is he? Yep. Then why did he instruct me to kill you when you found it? What? The truth, Saib, I am to kill you when you find the gold. Subhas, let me tell you something. I'm not looking for gold. Oh, I'm glad you are not looking for gold. I would not like to kill you. Uh, Subhas. His side on me. Uh, how much longer? Uh, we will be on the river two more days, and we will go on land to Tinsukia. Uh, well, I don't want to go to Tinsukia. Uh, where? I want to go ten miles or so northwest. Well, what is there? Well, there was a big army camp there during the war. You remember it? Oh, yes, I was a guide then, too. Well, you take me there, huh? Yes. after my outfit came over the Pangsaw Pass out of Burma that I found the Temple of Kali. Then we'd moved on to Tinsukia. All I wanted was to get to the site of the old army camp. I could make it from there on my own. But the closer I got to the heart of Kali, the crazier I got. Nothing mattered anymore what I had to do or who I had to kill to get what I wanted. We finished the trip up river and started overland. It was rough, jungle and rain, and the old malaria kicking it up. Five days later, we were on the site of the old army camp. This is far enough, Subhas. But there is nothing here. There's enough. This is as far as we're going. And then we shall rest before we return. I'm not going back. Then what are we... I got to do the rest of this alone, Subhas. You, you have no need for the gun. I, I know nothing of what you do. No, but you would if you stayed with me any longer. But I... I, I, I do not... <laughs> I left him there, and I walked on for another half a day... And then just as I'd remembered it, a cave opening almost hidden by scrub on the far side of a small clearing. I went in, and I saw it again. At the far end of the cave, the idol, Kali. And in the flickering light of the lamp, its heart. I moved closer to it. And then I saw him, the same little old, old man I'd seen two years before that same attitude of prayer. I moved again, and he sat there, hardly seeming to breathe. And then I was ready. I ran toward the idol, my hands reaching for the ruby. And then the ground opened beneath me, and I fell. A thousand hands clawed at me, held me, struck at me. And above, the heart of Kali shone scarlet.
I don't know how long I fought them, but the time came when I couldn't fight anymore. And so I quit and let whatever it was drift over me. When I came to, he was standing at the foot of the straw pallet I was on. He was tall, gaunt, dressed in a ceremonial robe that reached to the floor. I am Adram, the elder sannyasi of the Temple of Kali. And your name is Daniel Karlin, I believe. Yeah, how do you know mine? Your wallet, your papers of identification, your money, they are all there beside you. Oh. Look, look about that ruby. There is no need for you to explain, Mr. Karlin. I am aware of your emotion concerning the ruby. Our emotion, on the other hand, the emotion of my people has its roots in religious beliefs, in the beauty of I uh, Get life. to the point. The point? Yeah, stop playing cat and mouse with me. If you're going to kill me, do it. Get it over with. If it's torture you got in mind, then you shouldn't have let me live. Because I'm not having any. Body, <coughs> c'est <coughs> Hey! <coughs> Listen, you kill me if you want, but no torture. You kill me, but kill me fast. Oh, no, no, my friend. <coughs> We will do you no further harm. There will be no more violence done. Release him. What uh, are you going to do to me? We wish to honor you. You what? I said you are to be honored. Listen, there is already music that you are here. And tonight we have a butter feast, the feast of the reward. And you will be the honored guest at that feast. Uh, but... Why reward me? To prove to you that we have no hatred for him who desires the heart of Kali. Uh, um, what, what is the reward? You will know at the moment of bestowal. Mm -hmm. Reward? Uh, something I can take with me when I leave? <laughs> the emotion again concerning the rule. You just said you don't hate me for it. No. Come. Come, I will show you the place of the feast. This is the feasting hall where you will be the honored guest tonight. Adram. Yes. How do I know for sure that I won't end up on that altar there, with one of your people standing over me, ready to start butchering? You have my words. How do I know that's enough? Why do you torment yourself, my friend? Had I wished it, you could have been a sacrificial lamb long before this. I want to see the old man that sits in front of the idol. You will see him tonight. Hey, who is he in this setup? You will know tonight. Now, I think you had better go back to your room, lie down, and wait. No, tonight. Are you afraid? Yeah. Yeah, I, I am. Believe me when I say your life is precious to us now. I doubt that. Do not. I speak the truth. That's the trouble. I get the feeling I'd be better off if you lied to me. Go rest for the feast. I went back to my straw mat and I laid down. But the fear wouldn't go. There was a catch in this whole operation. I couldn't nail it down. Adram was convincing, but I'd heard too much about the followers of Kali to believe him. His attitude of nonviolence had a false spot somewhere. I couldn't find it. I knew that I had to get out of the temple before the feast started, but there was only one way in or out, and that was through the cave and over the trap door in front of the idol. Someone had to trip the door physically before it could fall open. I decided to make my exit look legitimate by taking somebody with me. Pani, Adram's assistant, was standing guard outside my cubicle. So I picked him. Pani, Pani, come here. Come here, quick. What is it? What is wrong? Uh, come here. Come here. Uh, help me up. It's, it's my back. The fall. Yeah. Perhaps the fall could have twisted you. <laughs> Don't you move or I'll break your no. Try that once more. I'll kill you. No. Where'd they put my gun when they brought me here? Where? Where? It is here in this room. Huh? In the pack you wore when you arrived. It is there in the corner. Okay. Move. Mm -hmm. 
What do you know? What are you going to do? I'm leaving. You're going with me for a while for insurance. Very well. Aren't you going to give me any argument? It is the wish of Adram that I do your bidding. Okay. No, no, oh, wait a minute. Have you changed your mind? No, no, I'm just going to check this gun. You're too happy about this whole thing. <laughs> Clip's still full. I thought maybe you... Oh, nothing's right about this whole setup. Let's get going. But, Adram... Just in case you don't know it, this forty-five can put a hole in you as big as a fist. No move. Behind the idol. Wait a minute. What about the old man? He will not speak to us, nor attempt to stop us. How do you know? I know. Okay. Well, let's move. Remember, if that trap door opens, you get dead. So no signals, huh? No. Wait a minute. What is wrong? As long as I'm getting out like this, I might as well get what I came for. The heart of Kali? Yeah. Now, back toward it. I got it. Now, start walking. Like you're leading me out, I'll kill you if you hesitate for a second, you understand? I understand. And then get gone. My friend, the butter feast is almost at an end, and yet not one morsel of food has passed your lips. Oh, I'm not hungry. Are you afraid you will be poisoned? Yeah. I will be your taster, if you wish. Oh. Adram, why didn't you kill me for trying to escape? Because your attempt was a normal reaction. You harmed no one. Oh, but I tried. Oh, but you had provocation. Man always lashes out at the unknown. It is to be expected. Yeah, but I had that trap door open as soon as Pani stepped off to it. Who knew that I wasn't supposed to leave? The old man who sits near the idol. Uh -huh. But I looked at him as I passed by. He just sits there, looks at the idol. He doesn't seem to know what's going on around him. He is aware of only two things in life. The heart of Kali and the Bata feast. He knew of the feast. And he knew that if you left, there would be none. Therefore, you are the only excuse for living that he has. Still don't understand it. You will. The music has ended. Now, the ceremony of the reward will begin. Uh, Adram, Adram, I... Set I, I, your I, mind at ease, my friend. No physical violence will be inflicted upon yeah, you. Yeah, but Adram, I have a question. What is it, my friend? Has uh, anybody else ever tried to steal the ruby? That is an intelligent question. Yeah. I will answer it when the time comes. Oh, why not answer it now? I will answer it in a moment. Remember what I once said to you. Your life is precious to us. Advance, guardian of the heart of Kali, before whether anyone else had tried to steal the heart of Kali. The answer, my friend, is yes. Almost 45 years ago, it was attempted. At that time, we also had a butter hmm. feast, the feast of the reward. Adram, listen, listen to and me. And in keeping with the laws of the temple, 
the thief received the reward which he now entrusts to you, no. the right to possess the heart which he so desires. No, I, I don't want it. For 40 years, the old man has been guardian of the heart. For 40 years, he has waited for one to love the heart as he did. Now, he will surrender it to you. No, 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 no I, don't, I, I don't want it. We greet you, guardian of the heart, and from this day, to the next feast of the reward, may you be close to and love that heart which shall be before you. Hail the new guardian. How long ago? was that? How many years? How many lifetimes? I don't even look at the ruby anymore. All I know is I've got my hand on the trap door switch and somebody has to walk across it someday. Why not you? Oh, that ruby, that red heart, it's yours. It's as big as a grenade, and it's yours. Take it. Come and take it. Please. Please, somebody, come and get me. Please. Under the direction of David Friedkin and Morton Fine, Escape has brought you The Heart of Kali, a story by Ross Murray. Featured in the cast were Paul Richards and Edgar Barrier. Also heard were Jack Crucian, Clayton Post, Lou Merrill, Herb Butterfield, Lou Krugman, and Paul Fries. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... That's right, Gunsmoke. Now a word from William Conrad, who many of you know as Marshal Matt Dillon of Dodge City. Thank you, George. You know, today marks the last of the current series of escape programs, and I know you will miss it as much as I shall. However, I would like to think that all of you who have listened to Escape these many months will now be able to take your pleasure in listening to Gunsmoke. <laughs> yes, starting next week, Gunsmoke will come to you on a new day at a new time. Chester, Doc, Kitty, and I, together with all of our strong-minded, brawling, hard-living citizens of Dodge, will come to you next Saturday, October the 2nd. So, goodbye for escape. And we hope you'll all tune in to your local CBS radio station next Saturday, October 2nd, for Gunsmoke. Until then, thank you, and good night. Thank you, Bill. Stay tuned now for Night Watch, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. Meet Corliss Archer for Monday Night Merriment on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>